Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available, or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, Let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps I encourage you, whenever possible, to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts and Schools. This month, we're going to be exploring the theme of collage. Collage is based on the French word that basically means to glue things together or to uh, put things together. So in French, the word for glue is col, glue. And so when we explore collage, we're basically exploring the idea of sticking two things together. Now we can use glue, but can you think of different ways to stick things together, to make things come together and stay together? Do we need to have glue? What about string? Staples? Water? What about when we put letters together, when we stick letters together? That makes the word, the French word, cull. But if I was to go and take these letters that I have and stick these letters together, I can make a new word. So when we think about the action of sticking or combining or attaching things together, we really don't have to just use glue to make collage and we don't have to just use paper, we're really able to use anything. And that's what I thought we could start by exploring this week. So I'm gonna move my collage letters to the side. There we go. And what I thought we could explore this week is making our own ready-mades. And if you don't know what ready-mades are, don't worry, I'll tell you about it in just a second. So if you want to explore along with me today, you can just watch, but if you want to make at the same time, do you have any paper? And if you've made with us before, you know, uh, I encourage you to go into the recycling bin. You can pick up paper that already has things written on them or drawn on them. They could be crinkled, they could be ripped. Anything that you can find in the recycling bin is great because we're just going to try things out. We're not going to make anything for keeps, so we don't have to worry about making any mistakes. We don't have to worry if something doesn't turn out because everything's going to go back into the recycling bin when we're all finished. Do you have any mark making tools? A mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. A pencil, crayons, pencil crayons, pudding, anything that you have permission to put on a page and make a mark is a mark making tool. For explorers, I like to use markers because there's a really good contrast. It's easy for you to see when I draw on the page, but you can use whatever mark making tools you have available. I then have this dashed line here and then I've put scissors. If you have a pair of scissors that you can safely use, or if you're making with a grown up or somebody who feels comfortable using a pair of scissors and they have permission to do so, then great. But if you've ever made along with me before, you know I don't use scissors very often because any excuse to rip a piece of paper is awesome. I love to rip paper. So when we get to the point where um, you could use scissors, I might not use a pair of scissors and I might just rip my page. And if you wanna do that too, that's great. Okay, let's look at ready-mades. What do I mean by ready-mades? So it's in the word, ready. And if we were to add an A-L at the beginning of it, that word says already. So it's ready to go, it's ready to use. You don't have to prepare it. You don't have to um, get it ready. It's ready to use. So for example, when I use my pencil, 
I don't have to do anything to it. It's ready to go. It's been sharpened. I can just start drawing with it right now. It's ready. If I wanted to use colored paper in my collage, I could go and get colored paper. So I don't have to color or paint anything orange. I can just use this piece of orange paper to add orange to my picture because it was already made. It was ready to go. In collage, what happens is a lot of people think they have to go and get magazines or books, which are ready-mades, and find a picture and then cut out things out of the magazine. And that's a great way to explore and try out collage, but it's only one way. And when you use a magazine or you look for ready-mades that somebody else has made, it can be hard to get exactly what you want when you have an idea in mind. So what we're gonna to explore today is making our own ready-mades. So if we wanted orange in our collage, what could we do besides getting a piece of orange paper? What if we didn't have a piece of orange paper? What could we do? Well, if I was to look through my markers, I see I've got an orange marker. So I could draw or color in a section of paper and now I've got orange ready to go for when I need orange. What if I didn't have an orange marker? Well, lucky for me again, I have a yellow and a red marker. My red marker has a lot of red in it. I think so. I could either go back over it and yellow again. Mm, not really. Mm, that makes some cool orange. But I think I have something called a blending tool, mm, which I think is a little dried out. Okay, that's okay. Remember, one of the things about explorers is that we have no expectations. And so if something doesn't work the way we want it to, then that's okay. We can try something else. So I went, all right, well, I have these. These should make orange. It didn't really make orange. Kind of just made a little bit of a lighter red. As I leave it, I can see it is actually starting to go a little bit orange, but it's definitely not as orange as my marker. But if I had crayons, or pencil crayons, or paint. I could try again to see if I could make my orange. That's okay, I'm gonna leave this. And uh, if I ever need to use kind of a ready uh, yellow or a ready orange, then that one's ready to go. Do you see I'm not actually drawing anything? I'm not drawing a shape. I'm not drawing, if I was drawing, say, a person, I'm not drawing a boot, even though I want them to have orange boots. What I'm doing is I'm just drawing something ready to go, a ready-made that is in that color so that when I'm ready to make something, I can go and I can use that orange. This is when if you wanted to use your scissors and maybe for just this one, I will use my scissors. We could cut these out and put them to the side And 
now it's really easy to see these just like pencil crayons or glue or string, right? Because they're just objects ready for us to use when we're ready to use those colors or those shapes in whatever we're going to be making. So if I had this piece of paper, and let's say I start by drawing a tree, branch, there we go. I get some green. There we go. Maybe I'll put some more leafy texture in there. There we go. Now what I can do is, uh, sure, I could take my orange and could start coloring, or I could take my ready-made and go, mm, I want a bunch of different shapes that kind of look like oranges in this tree. So I could go and I could cut little circles out of this. What I'm gonna do is because I don't really want them all to be the same shape and I don't want them to be uh, exactly even, I'm gonna fold my page up, I'm gonna rip it, I love ripping paper and I'm gonna see if I can make a bunch of circles out of just this folded piece of paper and the circles might not be perfect that's okay in fact it's the act of trying it out and uh, pulling it from a different surface from a different ready-made that kind of makes it interesting if I drew it I had I'd have a lot of control I might be able to draw exactly what I wanted, um, but instead I'm letting the paper kind of decide what shapes are going to uh, are going to be available to me. Kind of taking a chance. Oh, this one's stuck together. There we go. And there you go. What do you notice about what I just did? What I notice is because I use the same markers as what I used to draw on the page, it doesn't actually look that different than if I had drawn on the page. Oh, something's different. Do you see what's different? Places where I drew right on the picture and I drew on top of lines that I'd already drawn show through on the colors that I did. So it kind of looks like these orange fruit are behind some of the green trees or green leaves. They, they add depth like layers. Whereas the pieces that I actually uh, cut out, they're opaque. Uh, color or light doesn't get through them. So they do look like they're layered on top. So even though it doesn't look that different from when I used um, the same marker on another page and brought it in, I was able to do something that I wasn't able to do if I was just going to color. And so that's the interesting thing about collage. We're bringing things together to try and um, explore different techniques. So I was able to layer shapes on top of this and get something I wouldn't expect, which is pretty cool. I do have this orange sticky here. And so if you have a piece of paper from your recycling bin and there are lots of times um, you'll get like envelopes in the mail that will be a slightly different color or packaging. So if you got a cereal box or a sandwich bar or sorry, um, a fruit fruit bars or I can't think of what those are. Granola bars. <laughs> the cardboard packages um, might be colored or textured or the inside of the cardboard bo uh, boxes might be um, a brown craft color. And so you could totally use those to uh, have a color without having to color on the page. But what I have here is I have a sticky and I'm going to use it. And I'm going to cut the sticky part off. I could use that. Then I'm gonna put it to the side. So it's just like where I'd colored these ones. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did for the previous 
um, oranges or fruit that I wanted to put on this one. But I'm gonna see what happens when I don't use markers, how it looks different. All right, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip these up. Don't forget, you could totally use scissors if you would prefer to use scissors. All right, here we go. I think I'm gonna do one more. While I do it, what do you notice? What do you notice happens when we bring in ready-mades using uh, different materials than, uh, than our drawing? Here we go. What I notice is it really makes your eye go to those colors, right? So not only is it because this one is a really bright color, this is a neon color, but because it's so different from the marker, your eye wants to look at it. It gets attracted to it. It's interested um, incorporating different kinds of textures and information and paper and drawings and materials can really make people focus and think about, oh, why? Why did you use those rather than just coloring it? And they have to, they have to um, spend a bit more time with your drawing or your idea. So these ones were pretty simple. What we did was we just, uh, we made colors. And then as we needed color, we took the ready-made pages and you could do a whole rainbow of different um, pages or different textures that you colored and then you could cut them up or rip them up into a page as you needed the color. So just like if you were going to reach into your crayon box and get that color of crayon, you could just reach into your ready-made papers and pick the paper that you want. But what if we wanted to collage a bunch of shapes? or objects. I'm going to push some of these stickies to the side. So we got a bit more room. Actually, I really like these little rips that I didn't use. And I'm going to throw those in the tree because I like the textures of them. Here we go. Cool. And I'm just going to put my tree aside. There we go. All right. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about what if we drew a bunch of objects, we made a bunch of ready-mades, not really sure what our picture is going to be afterwards. We just drew a bunch of things. So for example, I'm going to draw a bunch of clothing. And I'm gonna do it with a black Sharpie because it's a little bit easier for you to see. You could use a pencil or a pencil crayon or whatever you want. So let's let's take a minute and draw every kind of clothing that we want to fit onto our page. And there are no rules. However you want to put them on the page is great. Let's go. Okay, so I filled my page as much as I could, and I wasn't really thinking about an outfit. I was just thinking about different articles of clothing as I went along. In some cases, I've got a pair of shoes that match. Sometimes I've just got a single shoe. 
in places where I could really fit something a little bit smaller, I tried to draw something that would fit in that space. Are they all the same size? Is a boot usually the same size as a shirt or tunic? Maybe not. And that's okay, because all we're trying to do at the beginning is to create some ready-mades. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to come together. When you're choosing different shapes or sizes or ideas or colors, they might not all be the same size because they come from different pictures. And so all we're trying to do is fill the page and I could do multiple pages. I could keep going and keep drawing different kinds of uh, clothing. I could also take on each page that I pull out, I could make this my shirt page and make another piece of paper my pants page or another piece of paper my jackets page and just draw as many different kinds of that clothing in different sizes, in different ways, and in different colors that I want. Because all we're doing is we're making a library or a collection of items that we're going to be able to use for our collage. I'm going to stick to black and white for mine, but you could totally color in your, uh, your ready-made clothing. So now what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm happy I put a piece of paper under this other piece of paper because the Sharpie was going through, but just because it's got some dots on it doesn't mean I can't use it for, uh, for the next part of our exploration. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a person. And I'm not going to draw a real person. I'm just going to draw a stick person. I'm going to give them some feet and I'm going to give them some shoulders just so the arms can be a little further out. There we go. All right. And I'm going to make them happy just because. And there we go. So there's my person. So now what I can do is I can take any of my collage, or sorry, my ready-mades, and I can start trying them out. And you can rip the paper, or you can cut the paper. Usually I like to rip, but I had my scissors out. And you can start choosing how you want to dress your character. What you're going to stick onto your figure. There we go. They're starting to get warmer as they go along. I kind of, do you see the, um, way my paper is freckled because of how the Sharpie came through the page. I'm starting to see because uh, my character has a, um, a toque, a winter hat, that, uh, that maybe that could be like snow. Maybe they're outside. All the more reason to give them some clothing so they don't, so they're not cold anymore. <laughs> I'm going to cut the neck out of it. There we go. It's starting to be a bit warmer as we go along. And can you imagine if I had done lots of these pages? If I had had one page that was nothing but jackets and nothing but pants and nothing but shorts, I could really change up my, my figure and decide what I wanted to include. I'm kind of limited by the choices I have, which is another fun challenge. Oh, I think I want the other shoe down here. Oh no, I want the boot. Um, because I only have a certain amount of choices, I'm kind of limited, but that could be fun too. What can I do? What can I make with what I created without making anything new? Is it gonna look silly? Is it look, gonna look great? Is it gonna look anything like I expected it to or did I not have any expectations? Am I open for it to be good 
or bad. You can also play this game with a friend or another person who's making along with you, where each of you make um, a, a page of clothing or objects, right? It doesn't have to just be clothing. It could be different kinds of fruit and you make, uh, you add it to the tree, or it could be different kinds of scenery. It could be things that you find in a bedroom, anything that you wanted to make for your ready-mades, and then you can draw the, um, the space that you're going to stick these ready-mades to afterwards. But if one of you made a bunch of pages of ready-mades and then you exchanged it uh, with each other, then all of a sudden it's kind of more like a magazine again where you didn't really get to choose what you had available. Somebody else gave you the pieces, um, but it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be as random as when you use a magazine because each page in a magazine isn't really planned to work together as a whole. They're each, uh, each page is its own thing. Whereas there's kind of a, a unity in drawing, right? Because it was you who made all of these marks. So there's something that looks the same when you make your own ready-mades, even if it doesn't look um, as put together or organized or perfect as if you had just drawn it on the page. There are lots of different ways that you can explore collage, and I just explored a few today. We're gonna keep exploring collage through the rest of the month. And if you wanna keep exploring um, with the pieces that you made or you have other ideas, go for it. We've explored collage in previous months, and you can check out those episodes on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online or on our YouTube page or Facebook page, youtube.com slash artstarts or facebook.com slash artstarts. Just like I like to do in every Explorers, I'm gonna leave my camera running while I clean up my space so that I can practice respect for my space and so I can be ready to make with you again next time. All right, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.